I'm back out here about an hour and a half before dusk and I've set myself up at a location I've shot rabbits in the past in the hope I can ambush a rabbit that comes out. The plan is to carry on into the dark. For this session I have my other PCP air rifle, a 177 Air Arms Ultimate Sporter Regulated, again loaded with JSB Exact Heavy Pellets 10.34 grain. To help with the range finding I've attached an LE032 range finder, which I find so useful particularly for rabbit shooting where rabbits can appear from unexpected places and move around and particularly useful after dark where it's so difficult to judge distances. After a while with no sign of rabbits appearing and getting itchy feet I decided to have a wander around the fields. Wandering the hedgerows I noticed a couple of rabbits out on the other side of the field Ironically, the other side of the hedge to the location I had tried ambushing. The rabbits would have spotted me and the only way I could get to them was to go around through another field where I could approach unseen and with the wind in my face. So I've got myself to a good ambush point with a natural high looking straight down the hedgerow I'd seen the rabbits but at this point no sign of them so they definitely would have seen me over the other side of the field. However knowing rabbits were about I decided to wait. At this spot I can either use my sticks or shoot off the gate which is handy. Sure enough one of the rabbits reappeared and with a quick scan with the rangefinder the distance was 42 yards so the shot was on with just a little bit of hold over. I'm just waiting here for the rabbit to turn its head sideways on and trying to settle myself and get the breathing right. Well I heard the thud so I knew I'd hit the rabbit but maybe not exactly in the right spot. But it ran a short distance, did a jump then dropped stone dead so that was a relief. As I had a rabbit at this location I decided to stay until after dark. I've set the laser rangefinder flashlight to line up with the vertical crosshairs at 30 yards, my zero distance. And if the light flashes to the right of the vertical crosshair, it's less than 30 yards. If it flashes to the left, it's more than 30 yards. This gives me a rough indication of distance before checking the screen to confirm. These add-ons are useful, but the plan is to upgrade to a day stroke night scope with an inbuilt LRF and have a dedicated rifle with the night setup to make it a lot simpler. It can be a bit of a pain with all of these add-ons and a bit awkward when shooting. The pod pushes your view position back and in my opinion awkward compared to without. Well nothing more at this location so time to wander the fields using the pod as a spotter. Unfortunately some unexpected rain came in, so not wishing to stay out getting soaked, not to mention all of the equipment getting soaked, I decided to call it a day. With the nights drawing in to a civilised time to be out after dark, I will try again soon. Working from top left to right, the ingredients for the slow cook rabbit stew are 3 tablespoons of sunflower oil, 
three tablespoons of plain flour, half an ounce of butter, some salt and pepper, 300 ml of vegetable stock, and I'm just using a cube, 500 ml of dry cider, a couple of bay leaves, four rashes of streaky bacon cut into half inch pieces, a couple of tablespoons of chopped thyme, one large onion chopped, about seven ounces of diced potatoes, four ounces of frozen peas, about five ounces of diced carrots, and the potatoes, peas and carrots have come from our own garden. And of course, lastly, the fantastic rabbit, which has been cleaned, skinned and jointed. Later, I will show the ingredients for the dumplings. First, the rabbit joints are coated in the flour, which has been seasoned with salt, pepper and the thyme. Next, add the butter and one tablespoon of the oil to a pan and brown the joints. When browned, add to the slow cooker. Next, add some more oil and fry the bacon for a few minutes and then add to the cooker. Add the rest of the oil to the pan and fry the onions until they soften. Add the onions to the slow cooker and the remaining seasoned flour and give it a stir. Deglaze the pan with some of the cider and then add to the cooker. Lastly, add the rest of the cider, the vegetable stock, bay leaves, peas, potatoes and carrots and stir. The stew will cook in the slow cooker over a low heat for about six hours. The dumplings will be added to the pot for the last three quarters of an hour and I will show that later. To make the dumplings I've got 100 grams of self-raising flour, 50 grams of suet and some water. To make them it's just a matter of mixing the flour with the suet, then add enough water to make a dough, which are then rolled into balls. The balls are then popped into the slow cooker for the last three quarters of an hour on a high heat setting.
This is a great way to cook rabbit. It's wholesome, healthy, and the meat just falls off the bone. It's a great late autumn and winter stew and very, very tasty. Definitely worth the effort to get the rabbit and enjoy such a fantastic meal. This reminds me of when I, when I was a kid, back in the days when wild rabbit was readily available and my mother would often serve us rabbit stew or rabbit pie. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you for watching and a special thank you to those of you that support Air Rifle Shooting as a new addition to the channel, an addition to the fishing. The channel now going forward is a fishing and air rifle shooting channel.